Hey everybody, it is Isis. I am, I wouldn't even say excited. Normally I'm like, I'm excited to go live. Um, I am going live because it's necessary. Um, I think like many of you, you've been grieved and in pain by watching what's going on. Um, if I'm if I'm being very honest, like I'm really I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken by what's going on. And I think like never before I've been grieved um, by what's going on. And not only because you see the the violence and you see the anger and you see the pain, um, but also because you also see that people some people still just don't get it. Some people still don't get it. They choose to see. Um, you know, the people that are looting, of course, we know not everyone out there looting <laughs> is is for the message. They're just trying to get it where they can. Um, but there's no effort to see their heart or maybe understand why they're so angry or why um, they're so frustrated. And so part of me, I am grieved, obviously, by what's going on, the death of George Floyd and countless others at this point, countless others. Um, but what I think I'm also grieved by is the lack of understanding and the politicizing of this moment even still even still the politicizing of this moment i'm um excited to see everyone join in and you guys can chime in where you can i would love to hear your thoughts about everything um and normally i do not go live and speak about things especially when they're very controversial i have a lot of opinions and i share them with the people that i'm close with um, but I'm very careful with how I use my platform um, to speak about things. And I normally would try to prepare and try to have a couple of notes and bullet points about what to tell you. Um, and I, I don't have that other than just to say, look, I am uh, pissed, <laughs> I'm angry, um, I'm confused, um, but I also still have hope. I am conflicted. As a black woman, of course, I'm angry. I see uh, the pain. I understand the experiences. Um, as a Christian, I am conflicted. I am angry. I am disappointed. Not uh, by the silence that I see from the church. Uh, and when I say the church, I'm talking about the church at large. And and sometimes the silence is, is just not calling stuff out for what it is. Um, and so, hey, Laura, it's good to see you. And so um, looking at, you know, who I am and from the perspectives and experiences that I have, I'm feeling a wide range of emotions. And then I'm also conflicted myself. Like, oh, what do I, what do we do? Like, what, how do we get past this point? How do we let this not be a, another hashtag? How do we not let this be another series that lasts for about a week or so? How do we actually see this turn into something? So I don't have this perfectly scripted thing to say to you other than I am hurting with you and I am confused alongside of you and I am angry with you and I just figured instead of trying to present this polished thing to you that I'm just real and honest with you about the fact that I don't know what to do other than to to pray um, but I, I know that you can't just stop with prayer you gotta get off your butt and do something right and so I am just, um, I just wanted to come and just connect with anyone else who was feeling the same way. And, you know, there is still in all of my um, feelings and emotions, there is still a truth. And one of those truths is number one, that God is still in control. You know, so many people on this time, this is what I want to encourage people really. You know, I see a lot of comments where people say, um, where is God? Like, where is God in this? And where is God in that? And why did God allow this? And and I get that. And honestly, the way that politics has used Christianity, has used scripture, has used Jesus, has used God, especially in these most recent years, is disgusting to me. And it leaves us in a position where, you know, in a moment where people need to hear uh, the truth and the gospel, that they're confused and they're conflicted and they're angry at God because of the way that people have presented him. Um, but the one thing that I wanted to encourage you today is that to not allow the acts of man to paint your picture of who God is. God is a faithful God. He is still in control. And number one, he is not, never confused about what justice looks like. 
He is never confused about right or wrong. He is never twisted by political rhetoric. He is a God of justice, no matter what man decides on this side. He is a God of justice, period and point blank. And the number one thing that Jesus told us to do was to love other people. <laughs> and even if you are not in agreement with how people are acting, you can still love them in the midst of it. I know that we've had some people, leaders, our, even our own president, uh, call the people who were looting thugs. But what I want to challenge you with is that unlike man, when God sees people not acting as their best selves, as we would say, or acting in a way that is, is, is not preferable, he never looks at us and labels us by our actions. When you think about, um, for example, the woman uh, who was caught in the midst of adultery in the Bible, and you know, there's all the Pharisees and everything, they're lined up and they're getting ready, I think, to believe, to, to stone her, and they're waiting on Jesus to get this horrible verdict and to slam her down for having you know, slept with you know, uh, a married man and all this stuff. He doesn't sit there and calls her out of her name. He defends her even in the midst of her being like she was. He loved her even in the midst of it. It always connects to something that I, I like to say, which is you are never too jacked up for Jesus. So while we may not like the actions of looters and all of that, please understand that God loves those people as much as he loves me and you. He wants to, he is grieving with them. He wants to turn them around towards, he wants them to, to know that he loves them. He's not hating them. And so often we look at the actions of people and begin to judge them and label them. And it couldn't be anything further from the heart of God. And so my challenge is even in the midst of, maybe you disagree with how people are protesting or whatnot, um, but can you challenge yourself to, to just pray, God, open up my eyes to see them as you see them. Open up my eyes to feel their pain as you, as you feel it. So that we're not adding even more hatred and misunderstanding to something that is already chaotic and awful as it is. Um, can, we, can we agree to see people as God sees them? Um, something else that I wanted to bring up to that, in light of all of this, you guys, it's, it's not even about <laughs> the looting. It's not even about the things that we see on the outside are just are, it's, there's, so, there's a larger picture that we must pay attention to, right? And the Bible paints it perfectly in Ephesians 6 when it says that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, right? So these arguments and this frustration and, and the heartbreak that we're experiencing, this is all part of the enemy's plan. He's, he's rejoicing. He's having a heyday right now. And man, if we could only see that we actually have a lot of common ground, that when, for example, when people say uh, black lives matter, <laughs> that they are actually saying the same exact thing as all lives matter, because all lives matter. All lives, black, white, Hispanic, they do matter. That's why black lives have to start mattering. It's actually common ground. We're fighting for the same thing, but we need to be able to have conversations that allow us to understand and hear what people are saying. You know, I, I think of, you know, a lot of things that people are saying, um, you know, they're either taking it aside, the side of the police, or they're taking the side of, of, you know, minorities, black people. It's like this, this odd, um, tension, but can we understand this common ground that if you actually meet the heart and you hear the heart of the people of, of the, the black man crying out for justice, that if, if we were actually able to have justice served for them, that when if we were actually able to hear and listen and have laws and get rid of systemic racism and injustices, that if we do that, that would actually help police as well. Because the, pe the people, the police who are doing their job and who are operating in, in, with order, who, who, who truly love the community, who are trying to protect them, that that would actually give us a chance to make sure that people have justice and those policemen who are doing their job are actually protected. But right now, it's police versus <laughs> the world, really, right? And so people are, are by us not understanding that there's common ground, we're actually putting a whole police all around the nation now <laughs> in danger, right? So by actually having a place of, of, of justice and actually having these conversations and calling out the bad apples and making sure that they are convicted and charged and, and held accountable, you actually say, hey, this is not all police. There's this person, they were wrong, 
and we're doing something about it. Don't generalize because it was this person. But when we say, when we refuse to acknowledge and when we refuse to, um, to call out what is wrong, then it allows people to say, well, all of them are just jacked up. <laughs> and so I believe that there's a lot of common ground that we're missing by having, not having decent conversations. And um, what at the end of the day, like I'm saying with Ephesians 6, what we see is that it's not about minority people versus the police. This is the enemy just stoking division yet again, and we are falling into it. Every time we refuse to see one another as human beings, every time we refuse to hear the heart of one another and just decide to be politicized everything, and we go to our sides, we're allowing the enemy to wreak havoc again. We're allowing him to have division all over again. So I wanna challenge us to stop picking sides. I can care deeply and respect deeply police and still have my heart breaking for the injustices that black people, specifically black men, are experiencing. You don't have to choose those sides. That is what the enemy wants us to do because if we're on sides, we can never come to the middle and the division will keep going and going. And so I'm challenging those people who are in my community to rise higher than these sides and to hear and to dare to hear what God has to say about a situation versus what your personal um, experiences and, and preferences are and, and what the, honestly, the media on both sides are stoking, which is just to choose a side, choose a side and one will have to win. Um, but as we see, when we choose sides, we get the same thing over and over. I think in this month alone, um, there's been three cases, I think almost like every single week, the last three weeks, uh, whether it's Aubrey or Brianna or, um, and now George Floyd, and of course, countless others for years now. It's like, all right, well, when's the next one coming? Because no one's doing anything about it. Um, so I just, I wanted to share that. And just to encourage you that again, God is a God of justice. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that prayer is essential. And um, as I mentioned before, earlier in this live is that I understand that, you know, the PR of the church right now, the PR of God right now is, is rough. Um, hey, Crystal, it's awesome to see you. And Akia, it's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, the PR of the church is rough right now, but do not allow man's um, execution of the gospel or the display of the gospel or sometimes the, the twisted rhetoric that po um, politicians will use confuse you about who God is um, or make you think that uh, God is not a God who grieves uh, with the world, who cares deeply about them and wants to hear, um, see his world and his people healed and restored and operating in unity. Um, and one of the ways that he has given us the most powerful weapon that we have is prayer. And, you know, along those same lines, we've kind of had national days of prayers erected at really conveniently, convenient, politically convenient times. It's, it's almost to the point now where sometimes when you say pray, people are like, Psh, whatever. Because Christian people, especially in the last couple of years, it's been rough the way that we've been presented uh, to the world, especially the realms of politics. So, but I want to say all that to say to acknowledge that, um, but to say that no matter what the world does, prayer still works. It's um, when we talk about needed, it's essential, and we will not be able to overcome any of this without prayer. At the same time, prayer is not where we stop. It's not enough for me to pray in my prayer closet. It's not enough. Uh, God calls us to, to operate and to do um, and to act upon it. I love this scripture in Proverbs 31, 8 through 9. It says, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of those who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the right of the poor. And so there's two things. There were speaking out about what you know to be true and then acting on it. And so I just want to say that prayer is essential. Some people like to say, well, we don't got time. To, what's prayer going to do? We ain't got time to pray for nothing. Well, we can pray and protest. <laughs> we can pray and speak out. We can pray and have conversations about rec racial reconciliation and police community um, affairs. We can pray and do. Um, but if you just do, or if you just protest, or you just act without praying, you're, you will not be as effective as, um, as you would have if, um, if you had invited the God of the universe into your efforts. And so... Um, just closing out, I do want to pray. I want to pray um, really just quickly. And I think probably throughout the week and as God leads, I will come and 
talk about some things that he's putting in my heart for this season. Um, but specifically, um, over some of the, the most primary things, which is George Floyd, <sighs> praying for the protesters, praying for police, praying for the church and praying for leadership. And yes, you can pray for Joyce Floyd family and police at the same time. And we need to, that's what we need to begin to address and not allow uh, political rhetoric to um, divide us. Hey, Julie, it's good to see you. Hey, Cheryl. Um, so let's go ahead and pray. And um, I invite you to share this in, with people and just go off and pray on your own as well when, um, if you feel led. So uh, let's first pray for George, George Floyd's family. Father, I pray uh, right now for Joyce Floyd and uh, Joyce Floyd's family, his mother especially, his kids, all this family that he left behind. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your heart breaks for them. I thank you, Lord, that you're acutely aware of how they are feeling in this moment. And God, I thank you that you are right by their side, that you never leave them, you never forsake them, God. I thank you, Lord, that you, um, despite what anyone does, you still care for your child as a child of God. And so, Lord, I thank you that you know us so intimately. You know each and every single one of his family members so well that you can speak to their hearts and encourage them where they are. I thank you, Lord, that they will not just be filled with sorrow, but, Lord, that you will leave the best memories of George in their heart that they would be left, um, that they would be inspired by the good things of his life, that they'd be inspired to carry on his legacy, Lord, that they would be um, empowered, Father, by the way, the ways that he influenced their lives, Lord, or that they wouldn't just be filled with, with grief, Lord, but that they would be filled with, with beautiful memories of their time together. And I pray, God, that you would cover this in time and in such a, a way that we can't even imagine death is hard enough, but to imagine a publicized, internationally publicized death is another. So God, I just pray that you would cover them and draw them near to you, Lord, keep them protected um, as they grieve together. And I pray that you'll bring the right people in who can support them in this time, even people who, they don't have the words, God, but they're just willing to be present for them. God, I pray that you would um, bring those people their way. And God, I lift up all the protesters who are out um, all across America, God, I pray that you would dispatch angels in concern of them, that you would um, I put angels on the scene, God, and I know that they're they're angry, Father, but I pray that you would protect them in the midst of their anger, Lord. I pray that you would meet them at the um, at the point of, of anger in their hearts, God, and bring them peace, Lord God. I pray that you would um, give them constraint, Lord, that you would allow them to make good decisions, even in the midst of feeling so um, round up, wound up, Father. I pray that you would meet them and cover them, even in the midst of all their emotions, Lord. And I just pray that, I pray against any useless deaths, God, any useless violence, God, any um, just reckless behavior that will not bring change. And Father, um, I just pray that you will use these protests, Father, that they would be able to be heard by those who can do something about it, not just in leadership, but each and every single one of us online, everyday people, those of us who have power and influence, God, I pray that we will begin to use our voice um, and our resources and um, our influence to be able to um, walk alongside them in the way that you have called. Uh, but God, I pray that this would not just be another season of protests, another season of hashtags, God, but that you would do something lasting, that you would bring revival to America, that you would bring racial reconciliation to America. God, we know that when uh, the world shines the, is, is the darkest, God, that you can do the most amazing things, that you, you can be the light and turn around things that we could have never seen coming and use it for your good, use it for our good. So God, I pray that even though it's dark, um, I just declare right now that you are still victorious and that no man and no um, situation and no chaos and no disorder can overcome what it is that you have planned for this country. And I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing together divine connections and divine conversations that people who are on the, a, a part of police and people that are in, in the minority community, that, that white people and black people and Hispanic people and people who are in, in the realm of politics and people who are in, uh, in, in Hollywood, God, and people who are just all over America from all demographics, all different fields, all different sectors, that they would actually come together, Father, to have conversations. I think that behind the scenes, there, there are conversations happening, that you're divinely connected people who are being grieved in their heart that who have influence and power to be able to make a difference God that I, I declare that you will get rid of the spirit of um, cowardice that people who are afraid to speak up and to stand for what um, it is that you have called um, them to stand for God I think that you are allowing them to operate in boldness and to know that when they stand for truth when they stand for truth, you will never let them down that you will have their back father and that you will multiply the power of the voice to be able to make change 
And God, I thank you for um, the police. Father, I thank you for the ways that they have committed to serve your people. And I just rebuke the, this, the narrative that all police are bad. Father, I thank you for those who are truly just passionate about protecting and passionate about serving your communities. God, I just pray for their hearts, Lord. I pray that you would strengthen them and continue to give them courage as they stand on the front lines, and especially those who are out in, in protest. God, that they wouldn't be discouraged from the call that you've called them to. Um, but God, that they would be bold and, and be, would be leaders in their community and say, hey, we need to have conversations. We, we can't keep fighting, Father. I pray for people within the police community to rise up who are willing to have reconciliation between the police and the community. And God, I thank you that um, you just continue to cover them and their families, give their families peace. Those they leave behind, Father, give their families peace. Cover them as they are on the front lines, God. And I pray uh, for the body of Christ. God, help us. I pray for those who are as passionate about speaking up during political campaigns, they would be more passionate about speaking up for the truth of the gospel, that would be more concerned about showing Jesus to the world than a Christian agenda. I thank you, Lord, that you will give us a heart that is after you, a heart that is after you, a heart that is, does not fear man, but a heart that fears you more than anything, God. So I thank you, Lord, that you are turning around the heart of the church. And, and I thank you, God, for those who are doing something, for the, the many pastors and ministers who are speaking, who are not afraid to, to acknowledge this for what it is, and who are not afraid to speak up or to even say, I don't know what to do, but I'm willing to do something. God, I thank you that you're, you're, this is a new day for the church, that we, would, that we would come to a place of repentance and actually be there for people like we're supposed to be, actually love people like we're called to be like we're called to do, God. And so I thank you that you're turning us around, that you're using this time to allow us to see ourselves in the mirror clearly with un unscaled eyes, Father, that we are able to see ourselves as you see us and be determined to rise to the call to be the beautiful church that serves the world, that loves the world, that has compassion for the world, that speaks for the brokenhearted, that refuses to remain mute, Father, so that they can see you, your kingdom come on this earth, the, your promises be manifested in people's life, which is a life of abundance, which is a life of peace, which is a life of joy. Father, I pray that you would do a work in the church, Lord, that we would no longer turn our face from the world, but God, that we would face what is going on and, and have a heart to meet those needs. And God, I, lastly, I pray for um, our leadership. I pray for uh, President Trump, Father God, I pray that you would soften his heart to the, the, to, um, the cares of this, of this nation. I pray that you would open up his ears to hear what it is that you are speaking. Um, Father, I pray that you would bring the right advisors in and remove every last one out. Father, the people that are not of you, I pray that you would weed them out, Lord, and that you would bring the people that are of you, that have your heart into the room. I pray for um, uh, just, a, just a new era in this, leader, in this leadership, God. I pray that you would allow him to watch his mouth, to understand that the words of his mouth have power and influence, God, and that you would allow him to operate with, with restraint and to be able to speak and demonstrate the um, the, the heart of Christ as he claims to, um, to represent, Father. I pray that you would empower him to make decisions that are not um, just based on political gain, but God, that are going to bring forth true change in America, Lord, because we cannot wait. And I pray for those who are on the, um, the Democratic side, Father, those lawmakers, I pray that they would not see this as a time to uh, politically gain as well or to twist, um, to twist and to, to try to position themselves, God, but that they would be greed from the inside out deeply, even as they sleep, that you would weigh on their hearts, that they would no longer um, be okay with using these moments to gain more voters or to gain more influence, God, but that they would be sick and tired of it themselves and desire to see true change, God. We don't want legislation legislation without change. And so God, I pray for transformation in our leadership on both the Democratic and the Republican side. I pray that you would bring them together. We've seen them do it with COVID. We know that there is a, an ability for them to come together and work in unity. And we ask you that they would do it on not just this important issue, but Father, issues that are plaguing America outside of, even outside of this God that they would actually rise up and be leaders who that you've called them to be, to do what you've called them to do and use their position of influence for you for, in a way that you have called them to use it. That they would steward their platforms for your glory and not for political gain. And so, Lord, I thank you that you've heard these prayers, that you care and that um, prayer is not, <laughs> prayer is the most powerful thing we can do. It is not the last action step, but Father, it is, it is our first line of defense. So, Lord, I thank you that you hear us tonight. 
and that you will um, cover the people that are listening in tonight, Lord. I pray that you would give them peace. And I know that everyone's grieving in their own ways. God, give them peace and show us even individually what are we supposed to do? What does it look like for us to speak up and to do something in this time? So, God, I thank you that you hear us. Um, I think that any time we can call upon you, I think that we're never too jacked up for you, <laughs> that no matter what we did last night or even this morning, that you love us deeply. Um, and so I pray that we would feel that love and we would know that love um, like never before in this se season. And um, again, just bless us with peace. So, all right. Um, that's what I have wanted to share with you guys tonight. I pray that it um, blesses you. If you have any comments, I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, but yeah, not a, I don't know. I think one of the, uh, the best things I can tell you is I don't know. I am taking this one thing at, one day at a time and trying to, um, rather than hiding behind a screen or just not posting anything, just let you know I'm wrestling with this stuff. I don't know what to say. I have a lot of conflicting emotions, but the one thing I am not conflicted about or confused about is that God is still in control, period. Um, and lastly, I will invite you all tonight. There is a um, prayer, a live prayer that's going on. Actually, what I'll do is I'll post it on my page. Um, but tonight, we happen, my uh, sister and I, she's our whole group of us, Operation Restoration 2020, we've been praying for the states, 50 states, since early May, I think May 1st is when we started or something like that, sometime in May. And tonight, we happen, we just so happen to be praying for Minnesota tonight. That's God. So I invite you to join us in that prayer. I'm going to leave, I'm gonna, I'll post it right now on my page so you have the, it's a conference call, you can call in um, and join us. But um, there's power in prayer and um, there's power in authenticity <laughs> and transparency. And so if you need prayer um, or you just want to be real with me for a moment, maybe you're confused or maybe you're angry, maybe you don't understand, I would love to um, chat with you about that. Let's just remain here for one another. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Love you, Julie. Oh my gosh. Good to see your name pop up. And thank you all for tuning in. Thanks, Akia. And Boo Yandi. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Have a good night.